In 1939 Seoul, during the Japanese rule of Korea, we are introduced to Choi Beidol, a young boxer who aspires to become a fighter pilot. Years later, in 1942, Beidol stows away on a ship to Japan but upon arriving there he is almost conned out of his money by a fellow Korean named Chun Bei. The two clash at first, but soon they become fast friends, and Chun Bei joins Beidol on his way to aviation school. Another few years later, in 1945, at the tail end of World War II, Beidol and Chun Bei are reprimanded by Japanese officers for refusing to die as kamikaze pilots. When Beidol fights back against a Japanese officer, the commander of the aviation camp, Kato, notices his skill in the Korean martial art of Taekyon. Kato challenges Beidol to fight for the lives of his friends, but as a master of karate, Kato easily dominates Beidol. That is, until Beidol throws dirt in Kato's eyes and bludgeons him with a rock to his head. We find out later this was the first time an opponent had ever landed a hit on Kato, but soon after, Kato brutally defeats Beidol. Kato then prepares to kill Beidol with his katana sword but instead decides to spare him. Beidol and Chun Bei escape the camp but spend the next several years struggling to survive in the devastation of post-war Japan. At the Ikebukuro night market in Tokyo, Chun Bei makes a living with his pachinko machine, but a gang of Yakuza move in on his operation and even threaten to kill him. Beidol jumps in to defend his friend, fighting off several Yakuza until one with a katana nearly cuts through his neck, stopping only at the last instant. Beidol is frozen in place from this, and the shock causes him to lose control of his bladder, and urinate in his pants. The Yakuza cruelly laugh at this and force Beidol to lick a Yakuza's boot while repeating that he is the bedwetter of Ikebukuro. Beidol is spared even more humiliation when another Korean named Bumsu intervenes and fights off the Yakuza. We soon learn that Bumsu trained Beidol in Taekyon as a child, and now Beidol pleads with Bumsu to mentor him once again. Bumsu agrees to train Beidol and for his first lesson, he hands Beidol the Book of Five Rings by Japan's greatest swordsman Miyamoto Musashi, on which Bumsu bases much of his training. Meanwhile, Beidol works with Chunbei and runs a rickshaw in Tokyo to get by. While helping Chunbei in the streets, he happens to see Kato as he enters the Japan Karate Association. Kato notices Beidol and to further humiliate him, reminds Beidol of his nickname, the Bedwetter of Ikebukuro. Beidol continues his training but one night rescues a Japanese girl named Yoko, from several US soldiers who are harassing her. This becomes a bit of a habit as Beidol rescues several more girls from soldiers all over Tokyo, like a kind of vigilante hero that is known as the Brave Tiger. Beidol and Yoko also become very close during this period and begin to develop a relationship. The Yakuza attack a Korean circus where Bumsu works in order to steal the money they have saved. Again Bumsu attempts to fight them off, but this time he is cut down by the Yakuza leader's katana. After Beidol discovers Bumsu's body, he leads a number of his fellow Koreans into an all-out brawl against the Yakuza. The Yakuza leader is killed, but the police break up the fight before either side can win. Beidol believes he has failed Bumsu, but heeding the teachings of the Book of Five Rings, Beidol decides he must be stronger to protect himself and those he cares about. To achieve this, Beidol leaves Yoko and heads into the mountains, where he dedicates himself to the solitary study of karate. The training is brutally difficult at first. Beidol is alone in the wilderness with nothing but a tattered karate gi and a modest tent during the cold Japanese winter. He attempts to strengthen himself by punching trees, using belts for resistance and breaking rocks, but nothing seems to work. It feels as though he is making no progress, and he seems on the verge of quitting. One night while cutting his hair, Beidol catches his reflection in a bucket of water and somehow, the next morning, something has changed. Despite the excruciating training, Beidol now begins to make progress. He toughens his body by striking himself with logs he finds in the mountain, does two finger push-ups, performs kata, and scales frozen waterfalls. He also reads from the Book of Five Rings each night. With his body gradually toughened, Beidol is eventually able to break logs and stones at will with his bare hands. Finally, Beidol decides the time has come to return to civilization, so he may truly test his skills. He runs to Kyoto and enters the Nijo Karate Dojo, where he respectfully challenges the headmaster, Satani, to a match. Satani says they do not fight outsiders, and calls Beidol the bedwetter of Ikebukuro, but Beidol is persistent, and ultimately he is allowed to face off with students of the dojo. One by one, Beidol faces off with and easily defeats students of the Nijo Dojo, by using his superior strength and conditioning, before finally facing off with Satani. Like the others, Satani is easily defeated, this time by a test of leg kick endurance, after which he falls to the floor and is unable to stand. News of Beidol begins to spread throughout Japan but he is now known by the Japanese name, Masutatsu Oyama. 
parallels are drawn between him and the great traveling samurai Miyamoto Musashi. Yoko hears of Beidol's progress on the radio, but Kato also takes notice and is displeased with Beidol's growing reputation. Beidol travels to Sapporo and the Kusanagi Dojo, where again he easily defeats the dojo's master, Sakahara. Running across Japan, Beidol takes victories at more dojos in Nara and Inuyama. At the Shin Bukon Dojo, Beidol has difficulties with a bigger and stronger master, Mori, but Beidol proves his resilience and ultimately defeats Mori with a jump spinning back kick. Dojo after dojo fall to Beidol, and must report to Kato, who is now the president of the Japanese Martial Arts Union. At Himeji Castle, Beidol faces off with Miwa, a master of ninjutsu who uses surprise attacks and deception against Beidol. Beidol pushes both himself and Miwa into the castle moat, from which Beidol emerges first, dragging Miwa behind him. At this point, Beidol finally returns to Yoko, but their reunion is brief, as Beidol must continue his quest to defeat all martial arts masters in Japan. Next, he faces off with Kendo Master Okamoto, Judo Master Hirano, and Aikido Master Kobayashi. Despite having to defend against multiple Kendo swords while unarmed, brutal Judo throws and Aikido holds, Beidol defeats each master with sheer toughness and relentless attacks. Beidol has now defeated all the masters who would accept his challenge, and has become very famous in Japan. Kato holds a press conference to proclaim that the karate of Beidol, now known as Oyama, is not martial arts, but merely fighting, and it lacks honor. While Beidol Yoko and Chunbei enjoy each other's company on the streets of Tokyo, one of Kato's followers attempts to assassinate Beidol with a knife. The blade does not kill Beidol but leaves him severely injured. While he recovers, he receives a new challenge from one of Kato's followers named Ryoma. Beidol admits to Yoko that while he once didn't fear death, he now wants to live because of her. Yoko says that in order for them to be together, Beidol must quit fighting as she could not stand it if he died in a fight. Beidol accepts this and promises not to fight again, however things change when Beidol learns that Chunbei has been brutally attacked by Ryoma, and Ryoma has promised to target Yoko next. Breaking his promise, Beidol meets Ryoma at a local shrine, where he fights empty-handed against Ryoma's katana. Beidol catches Ryoma's sword, but is pierced through the shoulder. With his opposite hand, Beidol then lands a fatal punch to Ryoma's heart that kills him before he can land a final blow with his sword. When police find Ryoma's body the following morning, Beidol is in prison for Ryoma's murder. Kato visits Beidol in prison, and finally challenges him to a fight to the death, but Beidol does not accept as he feels remorse for killing Ryoma, who he learns was married and had a son. Beidol is released from prison by a self-defense verdict, and soon after, we learn that Yoko has finally decided to leave him and move on. To atone for killing Ryoma, Beidol visits his wife, who is understandably not happy to see him at first. He presents her with his karate gi and vows never to fight again. Over time, Beidol gains her respect by working for her and looking after her son, but the newspapers begin to write slanderous stories about Beidol, stating he has dishonored Ryoma's wife. In response, Ryoma's wife returns Beidol's gi to him, and pleads with him to fight Kato, so that the truth of Beidol's honor will finally be known. Dawning his tattered gi once again, Beidol goes to a shrine in Musashino where he faces off with Kato and dozens of his students. Beidol fights Kato's students, one-on-one -on -one at first, then multiple opponents at a time, but it makes no difference. Despite taking many hits from multiple opponents, Beidol is relentless and one by one defeats each of Kato's students, who number around two dozen in total. With all of his students defeated, Kato's personal guards draw their katana, but Kato tells them to stand down. He will finally fight Beidol again. Kato shows his skill in the beginning of the fight by landing a hard kick on Beidol, but he is fighting a different Beidol this time. Beidol refocuses for a brief moment, then charges Kato with no regard for his kicks. Beidol knocks Kato down with a tornado kick but Kato replies with a jump spinning back kick. Beidol catches this kick in midair, then breaks Kato's opposite leg with a leg kick. Kato tries to stand on his broken leg, but stumbles, and is met with a finishing blow, a direct punch that Beidol pulls, only an inch from Kato's face. Beidol no doubt spared Kato's life by pulling this punch, and upon realizing this, Kato lowers his eyes in defeat. In the end, Kato and his students bow to Beidol as he leaves. He is now the undisputed karate master of Japan. In the final sequence, we see the next challenge Beidol has set for himself, fighting a wild bull with his bare hands. In the titles before the end credits, we learn of the true figure who served as the basis for this story. Choi Beidol, better known by his Japanese name, Maso Yama, who is the founder of what is often regarded as the toughest karate style, Kyokushin. What you have been watching is a recap of the 2004 Korean film, 
Fighter in the Wind, directed by Yang Yunho. If you would like to see more martial arts movie recaps like this one, be sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the like button. Us.